Hey, I'm Maisie Peters and I'm here chatting with Milky. I also just realised that last time we spoke, we were both brunettes. Now we're both, well, I'm kind of blonde and you're full on blonde. Wow, what a transition. We yeah. truly, do you feel like a different human? Definitely, definitely. I love yeah, it. I think so. Fun. It is a bit more fun. Weirdly, people it, are right. It say, is though, isn't it? Somehow, somehow they weren't wrong. They do be a little bit more fun. I know, I know. But uh, what I love even more is that you're coming to Australia for your first ever shows down here, which is super exciting. You know, you've got the headline shows, you've got the shows with Ed Sheeran. You know, what are you like most keen to do whilst you're in Australia? Because this is your first trip to Australia as well? It is my first trip. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be the best time of my life, basically. I've always wanted to go and I feel such a connection to Australia and and to Australians, I feel like they're my people and, and I'm their people. Um, so I'm just excited to see my friends, honestly, and like see like all the places that I've seen over FaceTime, like actually see them in real life, see the beaches. I mean, I every, literally everything. I'm like an Australia file, so I can't actually wait. Yeah, so you'll have the best time. It'll be so fun. These, you know, the intimate run of shows, the stadium run of shows. What's like in store for audience members who are going to see you performing here? I guess it depends what show you come to. But um, I, I hope that all of the shows have the same energy and the same, like, and I think they will because we're going to be so excited to be there. Um, so expect old songs, expect new songs, expect, expect the unexpected, I'm going to say. Love that. I was going to ask, like, how do you kind of approach like curating a set list for the two different settings? Because obviously, one's like a bit more intimate, and then one's like you know fifty thousand plus. Mm, it is true. I mean, it'll be good. we haven't fully started um, working out with what set list we're going to do for which one yet. We were trying to talk about it yesterday, um, yeah. but I guess I'm not sure. I I I guess we're trying to play to the strengths of both things. So playing to to the many or the few, just you know, working out how to do that. To the best of uh, to the to create the best show for that for each venue. Sick! I can't wait to see them both. <laughs> but also, I mean, you know, because I know you do some covers, and I saw your Dear John cover recently. So if you want to do that one in Sydney, like I'd be totally fine with that. That'd be, that'd be okay. Fun. Cool. I'll keep it in mind. I mean, the Dear John <laughs> cover has gone down swimming swimmingly, so it might it might carry on. But how important is live music and performing to you? Not only in like showcasing your art to the world but also like making that in-person connection with the audiences who do resonate with your music it's so important and I think that yeah it it really it's like why everyone does why everyone makes music I think is to is to share it and to play it with people it means so much to me that people like take the time out of their day and and their evenings and come and watch so I, I always want to give the most back I possibly can and and yeah I feel very lucky that I the amount of people turn up that do turn up so yeah so also this year you've shared a whole bunch of singles that have been so great Kate's brother good enough blonde and most recently not another rock star can you tell me a bit about when inspired not another rock star and like how that song came to be yes uh so I wrote that song with two of my best friends Inez Stan and Joe Rubel and the song really is just about my terrible terrible taste um in men and we wrote it after a particularly savage summer. It was it was really just so much fun and us just like having a good old laugh at my expense. And we and we really like we came up with the with the chorus line of not another rock star. And I was like, is this too far? And then I was like, no, I think it's great. And so lo and behold, we did the whole song. And um, yeah, and, and it's like so much fun. And I love playing it live as well. It's so great. It's a great one. Is there like a particular like line or lyric musical motif from that song that you kind of get stuck in your head more often than not, or maybe one that you're like most proud of? I do like, um, I do like the idea of catching him ripping his jeans. I did this didn't happen. I know ne- I unfortunately never did catch him ripping his jeans, but I love the image of like of like catching them red handed. Um, yeah. They're just like they're like ripping. That's the favorite. Yeah. Good one. It's a great one. As you know, as I said, there's been a handful of singles this year. Like, are you building towards your sophomore album, or like what's kind of your plan for next year i am i am i'm almost done actually with the album it's it's really in its final stages and i'm super excited for it to be done i think like it's i'm so proud of it i definitely think it's my favorite my favorite thing stuff that i've made yet um so yeah i'm i'm really excited for that but it's not quite done i need to when i get back on tour i need to finish it Probably Lily Allen, it's Sarah Barrielas, it's Taylor Swift, it's Ingrid Michaelson, um, it was ABBA. Um, like just sort of women women and, and, and lyrics, I would say. Women with a good lyric.
I mean, any of the people I just said, I love Sarah Bareilles. I just think she's amazing. And I'm the biggest, biggest fan. I think everything she does is, is unreal. And I love Waitress, I think is genius. And I'd love to meet and, and write and work with her one day. That's a good question. Notting Hill. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like there's a sort of no thoughts, just vibes um, mindset slightly. But also, I guess there is a focus on like, don't fall over. Um, so definitely sometimes when, it's, when it feels a little bit slippy. The other night in Chicago was a bit slippy and there was definitely a part of me that was like, don't fall over. Knowing me, knowing you, Abba. Good question. I went to see a band called First Aid Kit play in Brighton when I was a teenager and they were unbelievable and I was so inspired by them. And I'm now actually really good friends with Clara from First Aid Kit. So very full circle because i i'm gonna go see her play again in uh, hammersmith awesome. um which is gonna be so cool so yeah i'm gonna say first aid kit i mean the show we did in new york the other night was pretty crazy that was the, my biggest headline show ever and it was to three thousand people um and that was pretty pretty crazy so i'm gonna say that i have a few a few i guess um I will survive, Gloria Gaynor, can't go wrong. I have played a lot of dream venues. I'd love to play Brighton Dome because that was like the venue I grew up going to as a kid. Um, and I'd love to play Red Rocks. I think Lizzo has had really positive, a really positive impact on the music industry in the last few years. I feel like my future self from a year from now is going to be it's going to be pretty busy. So I'm going to say, don't forget to take time to absorb what you're doing and how cool it all is. Uh, and do your washing whenever you have time to do your washing. Don't leave it to the last minute.